Hi, welcome to Box to Lives. In this video, I'm going to show you a game called V Commandos. It's currently running on Kickstarter, and the game I'm going to demo for you today is a prototype, so the tokens, the tiles, etc., they don't reflect the final quality of the game. V Commandos is a cooperative game with players teaming up as specialists within a commando squad in order to perform stealth operations behind enemy lines. Enemy forces are controlled by their own AI, so it's a game for one to four. If the prototype's anything to go by, the final com component quality is going to be really good. These are our commando cards. We've got the scout, the s sapper, the medic, sniper and officer. We have some player aids as well, so we've got aids for enemies turns, explosive supplies, stealth and commando actions. A whole bunch of event cards that are going to drive the game along. And we've got objectives. We've got five different objectives. We have uh, bridge, underground base, village, depot, and the airport. A whole bunch of tokens, a six-sided die, and some enemy reinforcement cards. The full game invites you to play a campaign, or what they call an operation. So this might consist of... So the village, the depot, and the underground base. And the exit for one objective will lead you to the entrance of another. Okay, so you kind of play them in sequence. I think the um, for four commandos operation with three objectives like this would be about two hours. I'm going to demo just one objective today. Next you choose your team of commandos, and each commando has two sides, right? so we've got the sapper here, and each side has different skills. So the idea is to choose a commando that has the attributes you think, and the, the side you think will be best suited to the operation you're going into. Given my objective is to protect the bridge, defuse some bombs onto objectives, then I think this engineer character would be a good commando. He's got more skills on this side, but he's only got a Colt uh, handgun, whereas here we've got a rifle, uh, but a few less skills. Let's go for this side. And then we need to take our starting supplies. So we've got our Colt, we've also got some explosives, some TNT, some grenades. We also have the option to take one piece of extra kit, say a med kit or a uniform. I think I'm going to take the uniform. The uniform helps us stay stealthy, gives us some camouflage. And I think because the bridge is designed for two commandos, or up to two commandos, I think we'll play with two. I think we'll play with two. Let's use the officer as well with his, with his sten. And put him in uniform as well. It's always nice to get a Brit on the team anyway, so let's get our uh, officer and sapper here. These are their tokens now, here defending the bridge. And now we need to set up our terrain. These thick line ones, these are indoors. These thin line ones, these are outdoor tiles. When you're placing the tiles, it doesn't actually matter which tiles you use, because they're all kind of the same. Formation. They're either indoor or outdoor, it's just the size of the tile and then the tokens we place on them and where we place the, the unlocked and locked doors that's significant. And there's our setup. So this is protect the bridge. And now we can go about placing our tokens as illustrated here. Actually, I'm going to pop this in the middle, why not? It's a nice empty space for it. We've got enemy reinforcements coming in here and we've got stairwell here. An open door. Right, that's just about finishes it off, I think. And our objective is to protect the bridge, defuse these two bombs. If one objective is destroyed, then the mission fails. The other thing we need to do is each of these objectives, and also these, any other triangle objectives, any triangle ones you see, so it might be like um, an MG42 nest or something like that. You'll see one here on the airport. At each of those points, we need to place an enemy token. And what's significant is it needs the two white dots. 
because right, that represents the MP40. And that's it, just those three. The objective tells me this is my entry point up here in the northeast. Down here in the southwest is my exit. Once we've completed our objective, we need to rush here and use a move action to exit the mission. There's other things on the board. We've got supply crates, we've got unlocked doors, locked doors, these trap doors. This one here is an alarm. The designers warned me prevent the alarms from going off. If they do, you've got to shut them down as soon as possible. There's also this prison cell here, which has the locked door. That's reflected by this, this red cross icon here. I think that artwork on that might change for the final, for the final game. Uh, the commander who's in critical condition is immediately taken prisoner and transferred here. So you can see we've got to try and get them out. Um, and that's, I guess, you know, having two commandos is going to make it easier. You can ignore the recommendations if you wish and just play what, however many you want. But the bridge is a good introduction. You'll notice there's no heavy weapons nests on the board. Now to kick things off, we're going to draw one of these event cards. So we'll give it a shuffle. Remember, these are prototypes, so I think we're going to have some proper card backs in the final game. Let's see what we get. We need better weapons. Now it looks like this is a one-time effect and it's not going to do anything for us. It says in each level, the, the map area that we've set up is a level. Uh, replace up to three enemies with Mauser. Those are enemies with just one. If you look at the, the token for the Mauser. Replace them with MP40s. Now all of our enemies already have MP40s. So this isn't going to do anything. Now we enter the commando's turn. Now there's no player order here. You can decide as a team which commando is going to go first. And this is where the player aids, these reference cards, will come in handy. You have three actions per turn, and then these are the different types of things that you can you can do, and how many actions each one of those takes. So to move to an adjacent tile costs one action. To move stealthily to a medium-sized tile costs two actions. And this is where the size of the tile becomes relevant, because for one thing there's a capacity on each tile. You can only have four characters on a small tile, eight on a medium, sixteen on a large. But also, because this is a stealth game, each commander has a, a status of whether he's stealthy or not, and whether he's visible or not. A commando on one of these small tiles is automatically stealthy. If you enter one of these medium tiles with a regular move, then you become visible. If you take a stealthy move, then you stay hidden. Commandos on these large tiles are automatically visible. As it goes, both of our commandos are wearing uniforms, which keeps them stealthy and hidden on any size tile. Thematically, the point of the, the uniform is we're... Alright, this British officer here is disguised as a German officer. Okay, so he can become... Um, unstealthy. At the moment he's walking around posing as a German officer, but if he gets revealed as an enemy, as a Brit, then that's where you discard the token and uh, effectively your disguise is blown. The game recommends rather than leave them here, place them on the tokens because it reminds you that these guys are currently stealthy. So why don't we have our Officer Smith spend one of his... <laughs> I've just named him Smith. Uh, one of our officers... This is the entry point that tells us that here. This is the in uh, One action point here. And I think I'll use a second action to move over here. Can't move diagonally, by the way. I've got one action left, which I might actually save. There's a spot reserved here on your commando card. This one says plus one action. The engineer has room for two saved actions. So we'll take the token and we'll place it here. We can use that on a later turn. The other good thing about saving these actions is you can use them on the enemy's turn. So you're kind of, you know, you've not maxed out your turn. Instead, you've kind of taken an alert stance ready to react to any enemy movements around you. You've got to use all your actions um, or save. 
or your actions before the next commando can take his turn. So let's get the sapper moving. And with his three actions, I think we'll, so we'll move into the starting space. Then in here, we're still stealthy. Incidentally, if you become unstealthy, there's a, there's a separate side. Shows you visible. Um, and then we can use an action. So there's one action to pick up or use one supply. So we'll pick up this and we'll find out what it is. Make it nice. And we'll place it in here. This is his carry limit, okay? Now it's the enemy's turn now that we've used all of our three actions. And this is where these enemy AI cards come in, or enemy reinforcement cards come in. There's three levels. I've got the easy deck here. There's also a C and a B, so we've got easy, medium, and hard. So for our first game, we're going to stick with the easy difficulty. Well, we do draw one at random. And we're looking to place enemy reinforcements here. You use the black one if the alarm is silent and the red one if the alarm is ringing. Here's the alarm on this level here. At the moment it's silent if it gets flipped. And it'll turn red and then we'll, we'll have more reinforcements coming on the board. And this says we place one enemy not two, but one, and carrying an MP40. So here comes the enemy reserves. What I've realised is there's another enemy entry point here, which I forgot during setup. So that goes there. We draw another card. Um, this time it's two, and this time it's only one dot. So there's two enemies, each carrying a Mauser. Okay. So now we have to do movement. If any of our commanders visible, they're going to be moving towards those. But at the moment we're hidden, we're stealthy, and when no commanders are visible we head towards the event card and we look at this icon here, and this represents the tile size. What This is the large tile. If there's only a, like a corner then it's a small tile, or a strip then it's the medium sized tile. This whole area is shaded in, let me show you, that's easiest. This is movement towards a medium sized tile, this is movement towards a small tile. Okay, I'll shuffle those back in. So what this is saying is the enemies move to the next closest large tile. So these two guys are going to walk through this open door into this open terrain here. Now these triangle points, they're an exception. They're points of interest for enemy units. If they're guarding one of these triangle points, they're just going to stay where they are. They're not moving. There's nothing here for this guy to protect, so he's heading up here. Now, although we're stealthy, there's a chance that this guard is going to discover our true identity. So, whenever an enemy moves on to a tile containing commando, every commando must perform what's called a stealth check for every enemy entering that tile. All we do is take a six-sided die. If we get a one or a two for each stealth check, then we fail and we become visible. We're okay. It's a five. So this commando, let's call him Jones, he stays stealthy or even disguised with our uniform. Now at this point we would normally shoot any visible uh, commandos. Everyone's hidden right now. So that's it. Enemies turn over. The thing about these alarms though, and they're flicked when commandos become visible, we're in alert. There has to be an enemy here. And um, the, this is kind of an old-fashioned, <laughs> we're in the 40s, remember, alarm. They have to turn a handle to make the, the alarm make a noise. If you eliminate all the enemies, then there's no one there to sound the alarm. So it remains on the red side, but it's not ringing, so there's no you know, extra reinforcements. So look out for that. We've got to stay hidden, but of course we've got these these guards guarding the objective up here. And here, back to the commandos, and we draw another event card. So you can see that the turn play is, is quite quick. This one says, they come from everywhere. During the enemy movement phase, draw one more enemy reinforcement card for every trapdoor in all levels, and deploy enemies on the corresponding tile. Alright, so we're going to have some enemies spawning at these trapdoors. 